reading the Old Testament, it's easy to identify the cycle that Israel lived in and repeated. Times where they uh, lived in obedience to God's laws and decrees, followed by seasons of peace, prosperity, blessings. And then in contrast, the times when they did what was right in their own eyes, they forgot God's laws and decrees. They didn't follow after him. War, famine, slavery, exile. They wanted someone, some way to enjoy the blessings that God had promised to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 12. And Isaiah spends time pointing out some of those cycles, but also pointing to a future when God would do something that no leader, no judge, no other king had been able to do. In Isaiah chapter 61, it says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the blind, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. A Jewish hearer could not have heard this and not thought about the year of Jubilee. It was that time every 50 years where whatever debt that you'd occurred, whatever family property from your inheritance that you'd sold off, God took all those imbalances and says, it's time to reset things. It goes back to the way it was supposed to be. People wanted that restoration they longed for. Some people longed for a restored relationship with God, but sometimes because of their circumstances, living in exile, living in hardship, living in a season of war, they just wanted a better life. And fast forward to the book of Matthew. The, the Messiah has come and people just aren't getting it. John the Baptist, who had spent his whole life trying to make straight the paths for the Lord, says in uh, chapter 11, when John had heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? It hadn't worked out the way John had thought. And now he was in jail knowing that it looked like the end was coming. And Jesus' reply came from that passage we just looked at in Isaiah chapter 61. Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. I don't know if it was just a not so subtle message to John because the thing that was missing from Isaiah 61 was the prisoners being freed. You see, we expect God to work the way we think he's going to work. Even when we're deep in the will of, of God, we want things to, to be comfortable. We want a better life. Jesus finishes his message to John by saying, Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. God calls us to something special. And it It'd be nice if it was an easy life, but that's usually not the case. In a Christmas season when so many things are going to be different and less than satisfactory, I want to challenge you, Christ follower, to hold to the calling, to not fall away on account of your circumstances, but stay true to the call of preaching the gospel wherever you go. So at family gatherings, whether it's a Zoom call or getting together with the people who you're together with on a regular basis, make sure you point out the connection of Christmas to the coming of hope, real hope, God restoring uh, things to the way he designed them to be when Jesus came and made things right. Merry Christmas. Thank you.